Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Today we have a two-part question. The first part is, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior? Is He your Savior? He died for you. He suffered a, cru a very cruel crucifixion that was unbelievable in, in, in unbelievable torture. He suffered in your place. Do you accept him as your savior? Most people profess that they believe in Jesus Christ. Most Christians will profess it. The second part of that question is, do you believe Jesus Christ? Do you believe in what he told you? Do you believe in what he, the example he set that we should follow in his steps? as he did. So our purpose today is simple. We're going to explain what Jesus expects of us as we follow him. It's more important, he says, people call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I say? Well, we have two very important booklets that we're offering you today. The first booklet is, Why Were You Born? Now here it is right here, Why Were You Born? And at the bottom of the booklet it says, Do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out? Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet, you will be surprised. I guarantee you're going to be surprised. You read it along with your Bible. Whenever you read a booklet, read it along with your Bible. Why do you observe Sunday? It says at the front of the booklet, the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. Now, some people call Sunday the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. It's not the first day of the week. Which day did Christ and the apostles observe? Which day did Paul teach Gentile converts to observe? How did the day become changed from the seventh to the first? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 commands us to prove all things. I ask you to please read this booklet with an open mind. If you are already right, honest investigation will but confirm it. If you are wrong, you should want to know it. These booklets are free. You can have a DVD of this program for free. We have nothing to sell on this program. When the program's over, just call the number on the screen We'll take your name and address. We'll drop it in the mail to you. We never ask the public for money. Now we're going to the scripture, Luke chapter 4. Now let's turn in our Bibles to Luke chapter 4. And our purpose today is to understand what Jesus Christ taught, what Paul taught, what the Bible teaches about the Sabbath. Should Christians keep the Sabbath? Now, Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. And it says here, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He was born in Bethlehem, but he lived in Nazareth for a long period of time. And as his custom was, this was his custom, he went into the synagogue on when? On the Sabbath day and stood up 
for to read. So he read from the scrolls in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Now, if there was another day and Jesus Christ would have said, well, what difference does it make? You can, you can do this on Sunday. He would have set the example and he would have showed us that it would be okay. He never did that. Let's go to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, and this was after the crucifixion. And we're going to look at verse 56. Well, let's read verse 54. We'll start in verse 54. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. So the day of the preparation was Friday, and the Sabbath was Saturday. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to to the commandment. So they rested on the Sabbath day. And this was after the crucifixion. So if Jesus had wanted to change that, uh, why would they continue to rest on that Sabbath day? Now we're looking in chapter 24, the very next chapter, verse 20, chapter 24, and we're looking at verse 1. And we read here now, now the first day of the week. Now everybody recognizes the first day of the week as Sunday, right? This was very early in the morning. They came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. So Jesus had to be resurrected before, very early in on Sunday, or perhaps what we call Saturday evening. Now there is, we're going to do a program as we get closer to Passover, explaining that Jesus was in the tomb three days and three nights. So please look for that. All right, we're, the, next, the next scripture is Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to look at verse 1. Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, so this was as the Sabbath was ending, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So the end of the Sabbath was sunset. Now, we, we look at the end of a day as being midnight. We're asleep in bed and it's a new day. We wake up in the morning and we say, oh, it's a new day. Well, that day took place at midnight. Now, back in biblical times, the end of the day was the sun set. As the sun would set, then another day, that day was over and another day began. So they went to, to the sepulcher and behold, there was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. He rolled back the stone and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning and his raiment as white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers, these were the watchers, these were the guards, did shake and became as dead men. They fainted. They actually fainted. All right, we're going back to Matthew chapter 19. Jesus was asked an important question here in Matthew chapter 19, 
and we're going to look in verse 16. And it says here, and behold, one came. It doesn't say a Jew. It doesn't say a Gentile. It just says one came. One person came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Boy, that was a good question. What do I need to do to have eternal life? What do you think Jesus answered him? Just believe on me and you'll have eternal life. See, just step up to the altar and give your heart to the Lord. He didn't say any of that. Let's see what he said. He said unto them, to him, why call you me good? There is none good but one that is God. See, God is spelt with one O and good is spelt with two O's. You just add an O there and, and you can say God is good. And he is. But if you will enter into life, this is eternal life, keep the commandments. So the man said to him, which? Why did he say which? There were, we know about the Ten Commandments that were given at Mount Sinai. There was also another set of commandments that the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and all of the scribes uh, were uh, kept, and those were called the commandments of men. He wanted to know which set of commandments do I need to keep? <clears throat> and he said unto him, which? <coughs> Jesus said, you shall do no murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So he gave them the set of commandments, which are the ten. The ten commandments that were given to Moses at Mount Sinai. He was given those commandments to keep. Why? Why did Jesus tell him if he will enter into life, keep the commandments? Because if he breaks the commandments... He's sinning, and the wages of sin, as Romans 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death, death. But the gift of, of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Eternal life is a gift, but if you sin, sinning is breaking God's law. 1 John chapter 3 Verse 4, sin is, this is the definition of sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. Whoever transgresses the law also sins. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now please don't go away. We'll be right back. total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. If 
You're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day. Consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, don't touch that dial, because you're watching the only independent TV station here in Las Cruces, the Las Cruces Channel. Keep watching. Welcome back to the program. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. So let's turn there now, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and we're going to look at verse 1. Now here is some scriptures that seem to say that uh, people can work on the Sabbath. Now let's read it. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do you. Upon the first day of the week, now I think everybody will agree with me, he's talking about Sunday here, right? Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. As God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever you shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. So he was going to take up a collection. And, he, and, it, and it says here, upon the first day of the week, every one of you lay by him in store. So it would seem like that would be a church uh, event taking place on the first day of the week. Well, it wasn't. Let's turn back to Romans chapter 15, and we'll see what that was. Romans chapter 15, and we're going to look at verse 25. Romans 15, verse 25. And here it says, But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution. We're gonna, was that contribution money? Let's find out. To make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It has pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things, physical things. When therefore I perform this, I have performed this, and have sealed to them this fruit, it was fruit, it was vegetables, it was crops, it was various crops, various grains that Paul was bringing to Jerusalem because there was a scarcity there. I will come by you into Spain. So they weren't keeping a church uh, meeting, a Sabbath day meeting on Sunday. They weren't. So they were just gathering everything. Sunday was a work day. So they went out to the field and they gathered all the fruit and vegetables and grains and stuff and laid it up in store so Paul could bring it by to the saints in Jerusalem. All right, let's go now to Mark chapter 2. We're going to Mark chapter 2 and we're going to look at Jesus' own words about the Sabbath. Now, if he had an opportunity, if he wanted an opportunity to change the Sabbath, this would have been perfect. 
And it says here in Mark chapter 2, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man. That's mankind, man and women. And not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ, is Lord also of the Sabbath. Doesn't say anything here about the first day of the week. It doesn't even say anything here about the day Sunday. Did you know that the word Sunday is not in the, not in the King James Version? Did you know that? Okay, let's look, go back, all the way back to Genesis chapter 2. We're about going back, all the way back to Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 1. And it says here in chapter 2, verse 1, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. So God finished the job and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, it wasn't a seventh day, it was the seventh day. So God worked for six days, and it says, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Was he tired? No, he says, let this happen and that happen. L let the earth bring forth living creatures. Uh, and it happened as he spoke, these things were happening. He wasn't tired. Okay, but he set us an example. What example did he set? He rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And what else did God do? And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, which means he made it holy. He made it holy. That day is holy. No other day is holy because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So the Sabbath was never changed to Sunday except in 321 A.D. What happened in 321 A.D.? That's 321 years after Christ. Along came an emperor, Emperor Constantine, and he convened the Council of Laodicea in 321 A.D. And he gave a decree, and he says... Christians will no longer keep the Sabbath of the Jews. <laughs> he called it the Sabbath of the Jews, but will keep the vulnerable day of the sun. I'd like you to get your dictionary, open it up, and look up the word vulnerable. See? Vulnerable. Look it up. See for yourself. He was a sun worshiper. And sun worshipers worship the sun on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. I'd like you to turn now to uh, Isaiah chapter 58. Now, I always look forward to the Sabbath day that I could rest. And I love the Sabbath day. I've been keeping it for 45 years and I enjoy the Sabbath day. I can't wait until it comes. Now let's start reading uh, in, in verse 13. So here we are in verse 13, and it says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, that's treading on the Sabbath, you know, see, treading down on the Sabbath day, from doing your pleasure on my holy day. The Sabbath day is his holy day. And call the Sabbath a delight. The holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, 
nor speaking your own words, then shall you delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God promises to give people who change, who are willing to keep his Sabbath day, he is going to get, bring them up on high places of the earth. That means he's going to bring them up. He's going to bless them. What about you? Are you going to keep the Sabbath day? Why, do you, why then do you observe Sunday? Let's, let's look here at these two important booklets. The first booklet is, Why Were You Born? The second booklet is, Why Do You Observe Sunday? Just call for or the number on the screen. We'll send these booklets out to you for free. Now, we have an interactive Bible study every Saturday at 1 o'clock. Just come by, 1701 East Missouri. We have, a, we have a Bible study room. You just come right on in. Bring your Bible, a notebook, a pen. Bring your questions. We'll be happy to answer your questions. And uh, we're looking forward to meeting with you. Please come by. And uh, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth? with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.